Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Jurassic World Dominion video where today we seem to be going through a stage on this channel of discussing a lot of things to do with Jurassic Park 3. As in today's video we're combining the topic of Jurassic World Dominion and Jurassic Park 3 and explaining how Dominion answered a decade long fan theory that we never got a solid answer for. So, if you're excited for today's video, be sure to press that like button and subscribe to the channel if you want more Jurassic content here on YouTube. I also post a lot of up-to-date news regarding the franchise over on Twitter too, basically some things that aren't really worth making a video into just yet. So if you wish to follow that, be sure to check out the link in the description as well. But most importantly, let's settle down and enjoy today's video as to how Jurassic World Dominion answered this decade-long theory from Jurassic Park 3. Jurassic Park 3 and Jurassic World Dominion are both the third installation to their respected trilogies. Regardless of your opinions on both of these movies, it's safe to agree that they had their good moments. But Jurassic World Dominion was a solid movie that answered and explained loads of questions that we had prior to the movie's release. One of which was this fan theory that had been in existence ever since 2015 when the character of Owen Grady was introduced to the Jurassic franchise for the first ever time. Jurassic World was a great movie that brought us back to the roots of the original Jurassic Park for the first time since 1993 and was the first Jurassic movie to be made after a 14 year absence from the global box office. Within this movie, we meet the characteristic and macho man character of Owen Grady. Grady is depicted as a strong and independent worker who knows the ins and outs of dinosaurs. We learn that he is a psychological behaviorist for dinosaurs and he was brought in to inspect the Indominus Rex's paddock for weaknesses. Little did they know, he was looking at the dinosaur's psychology rather than the paddock's structural integrity. But how did he come to the man he is today? It's clear that he was hardworking and had plenty of time to work on him as a person, to work on his fear levels, and also has an understanding of wild animals. So how did he do all of this? Well, in Jurassic World, after the Indominus Rex breaks out, we have Claire and Owen trying to track down Zack and Grey who have gone missing. After Claire's ridiculous screaming, Owen tries to calm her down and shut her up before they become dinner for the Indominus Rex. Now, as he does that, Claire says, Hey, I'm not one of your damn animals. After this, Owen mentions how the kids might be alive, but with her screaming, both Owen and Claire will not be. This then led Claire to say, Well, you can pick up their scent, right? In a comedic factor as she wasn't sure on Owen's backstory to which he then opens up about and explains how he was originally part of the Navy, not the Navajo. So, as we know, Owen was a part of the Navy in his previous life before Jurassic World, which would explain his physique and understanding of how things work. Make sure you remember that as we're going to need that information later on for the video. Now, one popular fan theory that has also been answered thanks to Jurassic World Dominion was the idea that the kid we see in the earlier part of Jurassic Park, mocking the Velociraptor and calling it a six foot turkey, could have been Owen Grady. More like a six foot turkey. It was understood that many people would like to have believed that Owen Grady was this kid, who was scarred yet impressed by Dr. Alan Grant's speech about Velociraptors back in 1993. This would then lead him into being very interested with Velociraptors, which would explain why he got into the Ibris project for Jurassic World, the project that surrounded the study of intelligence of Velociraptors. However, what I'm about to explain to you confirms a finalized answer for this theory. But the other main theory that we are discussing in today's video is that Owen may have been part of the Navy that arrived at the end of Jurassic Park 3 to rescue the Kirby's and Alan Grant off of Isla Sauna back in 2001. After all, Eric does confirm that the Navy was sent out to rescue them. You have to thank her now. She sent the Navy and the Marines. So I'm starting to think you all know where I'm finally going with this. There are a massive group of people out there that thought that an interesting connection or theory would be that Owen Grady was part of that Navy team that arrived on Isla Sauna to rescue Grant and the Kirby's. Well, 
Jurassic World Dominion now confirms an official answer to this. During Jurassic World Dominion, we finally get to see the world cast and the park cast come together in an ultimate finale to wrap up the entire saga. Upon meeting for the first ever time, Grady and Grant didn't exchange many words, which is quite understandable given the circumstances. Their random arrival, mixed with a shock appearance of the Giganotosaurus, yeah, not really an ideal time to chit chat. But after this, we finally see our heroes get away from the Giganotosaurus and relax in the safety of a Biosyn control room. Within this room, Owen Grady gives water to Ellie Sattler and Alan Grant, notably not Ian Malcolm, however. Can't get hold of anybody since everything is uh, on fire. Dr. Sattler, get some water. Dr. Grant, you are. Alan then goes ahead and repeats his name as he remembers that Owen Grady was dubbed as the Raptor Trainer from Jurassic World. Owen Grady then mentions how he tried to handle the Raptors, and then the conversation kind of just ends there. I'm, uh, I'm Owen Grady, big fan. I read your book. Well, book on tape. Owen Grady, Owen Grady, I know who you are. You trained Raptors. Yeah. <laughs> I tried. But, interestingly, it doesn't end because something crazy is going on, meaning that more dialogue could have actually been exchanged between the two, especially if he was supposedly the kid that Alan met back in 1993 or potentially part of the Navy that rescued Alan's ass. I'm sure for fact he would have mentioned how he saved his ass in 2001 and how Grant imprinted on him back in 1993 that ultimately secured his fascination of velociraptors. But there was no mention of this whatsoever, absolutely zero. Now, this doesn't mean it didn't happen, but if I were Owen in this situation, I would without a doubt be bringing up the fact that they first met 29 years ago, and I am sure that many of you guys watching this video right now would have probably done the same thing in Owen's shoes. So, why didn't he? Well, simple answer, because Owen wasn't part of the Navy that rescued Alan Grant, nor was he the kid in the first Jurassic Park movie. Thanks to Jurassic World Dominion, we finally now know what the answers were to both of these theories. Now, while we know that Owen Grady wasn't part of that Navy in 2001, we do know that he was part of SEAL Team 4 between the years of 2004 and 2008, implying that he was most likely in the Navy around the time of 2001. So, while there is a very, very slim chance, it's extremely unlikely that he was involved in the rescue mission on Isla Sauna, and he was definitely not the kid from Jurassic Park. And there, we finally have our answer after many, many years of waiting from this franchise. And it all comes down to Jurassic World Dominion, and a very <laughs> lacklustre conversation between Alan Grant and Owen Grady. Well, there you have it ladies and gents. Unfortunately, this might not have been the answer you were seeking, but it's the answer we have nonetheless. It should have arrived in better circumstances, and I really hope they don't go randomly out of their way to confirm any of these two theories being true, because that would just make us question why they never discussed it in that specific scene within Jurassic World Dominion. I guess you could say it's an underwhelming way to get your answer, but it's a way nevertheless. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to press that like button and share it around with your friends who may be thinking the same thing. Don't forget to also subscribe to the channel as we aim to get to 200,000 subscribers before the JP30 event in June of 2023. But most importantly, all I ask for from you guys today is to make sure you're all staying safe out there, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye. Hello, hi, you, did you enjoy the video? Just a little reminder to press that like button and also subscribe. I just want to thank my Patreons for this month on screen right here, as giving me that little extra support really does go a long way. But anyways, I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day.